Your next career move could be the one you never imagined. Web3 Nomads. Everywhere jobs for anywhere people. All right, I think that's working. So welcome back, everyone. Today we're gonna today we're gonna go through. It's a little bit more structured this time. I think we've uh, came to a good conclusion of how to kind of structure these Friday roundups or catch-ups or whatever you want to call them. We're going to do one a week because the sheer amount of interviews that we're doing with projects is taking up an awful lot of time and we don't want the kind of internal catch-ups to get kind of diluted. If you keep an eye out for next week, we've got the Rocket Pool guys and Sriram from Eigenlayer and there's a lot of, lot of others coming out as well. So we're going to keep these internal blockmates catch-ups to a Friday um, and the kind of structure is just going to go we're going to go through some news um, there's lots of hilarious kind of Bitcoin maxis got meant a lot at the minute um, some education around the whole Canto ecosystem what's happening over there a little bit, little bit of a debate on Twitter what's happening with the search function the algo and like the API um, payment wall that's just about to go up there's some alpha with some kind of launches that are coming up. And then I want to focus on some governance rundowns. There's a few interesting ones there that will have actionable, actionable information. Then, as always, we'll get into some normal charts, some Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some shit coins as well. So before we get into it, gents, how are we? I see Jerry's got his Canto cap on. <laughs> <laughs> It's a shame I didn't buy any Canto. It seems like it did really well. And a lot of people, yeah, did like X's on it. Five, six, seven, eight X's on it. So, yeah, that thing's been f- on fire, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, we we should have taken uh, note of Matt's uh, profile picture. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, and everyone's gone private on Twitter. So I think I need to do it as well. Apparently, engagement's up. Apparently, if you go private, more people arrive on Twitter and they start engaging with you miraculously, apparently. Yeah, I think the best place to start was uh, this hilarious. Um, let me just bring up that on full screen. I think we should uh, start with that on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the newsletter website, because I do believe that there is an exclusive poll in the newsletter that could get you featured on Mondays. I think we should pull it up, Grant. Do you want so to tell ask, everyone what the tweet was while I was there? Uh... Yeah, we so had, ask a stupid to, question. Uh... Ask a stupid question um, around a article that was published as to who the 20th most influential people are in crypto. And obviously a list of people come up that very few people have heard about. Let's be clear. They were known, but very few people knew who they were. Obviously, we live in, a, in an alternate reality to mainstream media. And I asked the question, does anyone know who these people are? And lo and behold, the whole post went viral. Um, it seems the dumber the, the dumber questions get the airtime, and that was a dumb question, and it almost reached two million views. So, yeah, um, it's just been insane the last week to see this algo <laughs> kick in. <laughs> yeah. So, what can you fill us in on what the poll was, Dan? Just for people who are just listening and not um, watching. Yeah. So, so basically, like Jedi did an absolute blinder this week. He made the most stupid Twitter post that <laughs> went absolutely viral. And if you're in our Discord, you will literally see him every 10 minutes like, hey guys, I'm now 1.1 million. Oh, hey guys, I'm now 1.2 million. <laughs> oh, hey guys, I'm at 1.3. I'm like, Jedi, mate, th- this is great. Like, you've got a million. This is great success. This is like, this is your like, two fat. Mate, when we get to the end of the year, this is your 2023 highlight of the year so Definitely. in the newsletter we decided to Definitely. make a poll that the, if you're if you are just listening to this so basically like the um the post is does anyone know who these people are this is not uh, the crypto i know and apparently there's an article uh, done by one of these averagely you know positioned you know fin- financial websites um and it's meet the 20 most influential people in crypto honestly when you look at the comments nobody's got an absolute clue you got three you got you got three you got three birds and two dudes that just look like they work down the local like investment shop right so we've got a little poll there and it's saying do you know who these people are comment wrong answers only best answer gets a shout out next week so are they real life (laughs) wizards are they ai creations from narnia um they look like my dad's colleagues which you know a couple of them do the the guy on the bottom right definitely does definitely in it um, or you can add your own wrong answer. And the best wrong answer 
we'll get a massive shout out in the in the thread in the newsletter next week. So have a look. Um, you know, obviously wrong answers only. You know, please, please don't be too too rude or harsh. Um, keep it funny. Um, and then yeah, we'll, we'll give you a shout out and a feature. Hilarious. There's uh, you know? there's um there's already one, but they've. They haven't submitted it through the newsletter. They've submitted it to Twitter, so I don't think it counts because, as a, again, if you're listening, there's a there's like a, a woman with really long blonde hair in the middle, and someone said, "I think that's Corby in the middle." <laughs> <It's> like Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> should we um should we pull up some of the comments? Because some of these comments oh, are actually dude. really good. So good. Because you got some like serious people who actually did list who they were. <laughs> so so Diana Biggs actually was. I followed her when someone told me who it was. And then she says, mate, you're following me. So obviously I had to reciprocate and say, mate, since yesterday, once I read about your influence and wonder. <laughs> oh, mate, she is never she the blonde bird in the middle? Yeah, dude. But she never responded ah. to that. Mate, the rejection. Middle yeah. one is Kobe, I think. JB, JB's got the best one. There's always there's always someone who can point out who, like, there's yeah. always someone who's going to go against it. Like, Andy's is at his XRP farmer, so that kind of says a lot. Um, and then they said Sandy Young, apparently the managing director of XRP, well, Ripple in Europe. I mean, is he really that influential? I mean, I'm sure the guy's super clever and all that kind of stuff, but is he really that influential? No, in what capacity? <laughs> they look very, yeah. they look very web two ish. <laughs> Oh, do me right. <laughs> we we so, could literally spend a whole episode going through that. Oh, that's hilarious, isn't it? It's insane. So, um, one of the main features of the newsletter that came out yesterday was this idea that people have found some minor kind of hack or not hack, but I don't even know the correct phrasing of it. But they found ways to kind of put um, data on the block on the Bitcoin blockchain, which is kind of hilarious because it's it's pushing people to complete opposite ends of the spectrum. So this dotter on Twitter has came out and said, I've just spent 0.2 Bitcoin on this ordinals inscribed Bitcoin rock. Um, why you should pay attention to Bitcoin NFTs. And like, we'll leave this in the description along with every other kind of link that we bring up today. But Dan, what was, what was the kind of premise from the newsletter? Where's what's happened with this ordinals thing? And um, why, uh, I'm sure we'll get into it in a minute, but why are the Bitcoin maxis gone nuts? <laughs> So, so basically, like, there's um, so this guy called Casey, and he's essentially like brought NFT culture and NFTs uh, to to Bitcoin. And we all know, like, Bitcoin. I'm sorry, Jedi. I know you're a Bitcoin maxi, but Bitcoin's a, a useless chain. Chain. It doesn't really do much. There's nothing to do over there. You just got all these like little laser-eyed like goons, you know, posting about you know whatever they do about Bitcoin. Um, so. He bring he ends up creating like ordinals, and he recently did a case did a podcast um, with Hell Money, and what was super funny is it literally did it for the meme, and he was, even he said even I added the timestamps in the newsletter, but it was like this is a hundred percent meme driven de development. So I feel like he's just done the biggest troll to like all of the Bitcoin maxis that are out there, but if you actually want to know what the what the tech is. Um, Essentially, like he's created uh, something called like inscriptions, which are digital artifacts, and these are a Bitcoin native uh, mechanism. And you basically like inscribe satoshis with content using an ord, which can then be used, which can be viewed on the Ordinals Explorer. So then there's no need for like a token or a sidechain to do anything. Um, but what's been really funny is he's brought like NFT culture to Bitcoin and. It's going to be inch. What's going to be super funny is is this little brown rock here going to do what Ether Rocks did back in the bull run, where you were buying a little grey rock for like three million US dollars, three million US dollars for a little little grey rock. It's mad. <laughs> yeah. Pepe's so there. each with with that inscribing, each Satoshi is effectively being able to be located wherever it's kind of passed on along like the blockchain so it's it's a really interesting way but um as you can imagine it's quite divisive because people are annoyed that on one hand people are annoyed that it's using the blockchain for 
illegitimate purposes effectively and it shouldn't be used for that it should be kind of hard money and that's that's the be all end of it all on the other hand people are saying well it might be the first use case that the network's actually seen in a like since inception effectively but udis came out um pulling up these kind of if you Udi just, is the just king there's of just a lot of debate yeah Udi is the king of so, curling the bitcoin maxis isn't he yeah so this luke uh dash here dash junior they're attacking bitcoin not using it we can agree they're creating valid tra- bitcoin transactions right no lmao so how are they included in the blocks by lying and tricking the code so it's <sighs> this is the problem when you you put your opinion and I, I understand there's a complete philosophical debate to bitcoin and i love that aspect of it but when you're so fixed and entrenched in your opinions and they're so public if something comes up where it flows, throws a spanner in your works because of innovation and you don't kind of reassess your own opinions and check your own bias, I just think that's a just makes you come across as pretty stupid, to be honest. Um, like, str- what's, what's the third? Like, strong opinion tells loosely. It's that meme know. with the, it's the meme with the guy on the bicycle and he's riding along and then he pulls out the steel pipe and he sticks it in the spokes and he falls over. That's what that is. That's the basic <laughs> <name> for that. <laughs> so what's what's interesting is where is it? Oh, Adam. Adam's an interesting one on this whole topic, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm trying to find the. This might be. It. We almost mm-hmm. found the structure, eh? <laughs> yeah. We can cut that a little bit. So Adam Back, um, obviously huge OG, like one of the first two people that um, ever were in contact with Satoshi by email, has is, is came out and said, we can recognize that we can't really stop them and it's a free world and anonymous miners, but we can help educate and encourage developers who care about Bitcoin's use case to even not do that or in a prunal, prunable, space-efficient, e.g. time timestamp way. Um, it's also a fair game for miners to censor the crap as a form of disencouragement, um, w- which is really strange because, like, someone who's like at the very inception of this whole um, movement, landscape, and everything like that. I mean, one of the inventors of Hashcash, um, as I said, one of the first two people that Satoshi ever spoke to over the email. Some people have proposed that he was Satoshi, even Satoshi. Great- yeah. Yeah, Craig White sued him, um, stating that Craig White wasn't Nakamoto. So, like, very, very, very close to the actual genesis of this whole space. And he's kind of saying we should be censoring these kind of transactions. Um, and what's even funnier is um, this t shirt that he was wearing, um, but I can't remember what the, what the time on this was but it is it was back in like the 90s and um this was uh the the, the caption on it says the black money muni- tons t-shirt which featured the munitions, the t-shirt. munitions yeah yeah so it features a computer code that was considered to be a weapon in the united states so it's like again when something kind of comes out with a hint of innovation and it throws them for Hits them for six effectively. It's you know, the, but that's their bias, their broader, bias doesn't stand up, dude. But that's a broader philosophical discussion as well, in terms of your your bias being challenged, and your bias is great until it be, it gets challenged. But are you able to be the bamboo in the wind, or are you going to try and be the steel structure and not be flexible? And clearly, Adam just failed that test, and it's really is sad because, like you said, Adam was considered to be by many to be actually or suspected of, the, of being Satoshi because he held that that principle and those ideals so close. And I think he failed the test, to be honest, especially with this. It's kind of like, well, Taproot fucked up. Taproot opened the door. It's there now. Are you going to embrace it and go with the wind or are you going to try and resist it? And clearly the resistance has exposed his bias, which is sad. Do you guys think this is yeah. good for Bitcoin as a blockchain? I don't think no, it's good or bad. From my perspective, I don't think it's good or bad. It just is. 
it's just part of the evolution it's part of these kind of discussions it's part of insight being insightful around what this technology is and how prepared are you to bend with the wind you've got to be bamboo or as bruce lee said you have to be water probably one of the most like one of the best things that have has ever been said by anyone is you got to be water and you've just got to go with it and if you can't then you're just going to be another another idiot amongst many idiots yeah i don't know probably say my I, I, I don't really have a strong opinion on it either way to be honest it's kind of funny just to sit on the sides and watch it play out and people trip themselves over their own arguments just be continued walking contradictions effectively what do you uh, think it's quite sad. Do you think this is good or bad sorry uh grant no what no, no think totally, good or bad? I, I, th I think it's great like I've, I've not looked into like bitcoin so much in like you know, years so, it's it's, yeah. it's hilarious like it's bringing bitcoin like to the forefront again it's like making the og an actual og because now it's like oh so you mean you can use bitcoin like bitcoin is more than just it's an actual blockchain like there's things that are going on over there you mean i can i can go and get a profile picture with laser eyes again and not feel like an absolute tool this is great like it's gonna i think it's gonna spark okay if it sparks shit coin sorry excuse the french if it sparks a shit coin season on bitcoin blockchain that will be amazing if you get all the micro cap <laughs> traders over there oh my god chaos will ensue i think i i personally think this is a very very good thing uh for bitcoin as a blockchain you know bring bring me meme, meme culture send it over there and you know maybe, maybe we get um a, a 69 420 bitcoin again you know before the end of the year maybe plan b could be right salty what did he yeah, say think... actually what was his comment yeah. around it plan b because obviously i'm blocked um is, is he not still banned from like life at the moment I don't know. Is Plan B still around? Has he banned you as well, Grant? I and the guy's probably got like 5 million followers because he keeps telling people Bitcoin's going to $3 million. I don't know. Um, I don't, what's, not, what's his Twitter? Yeah, you got banned, dude. He banned you. He's blocked you. Nah, He's it's not. not. It's because it's 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 Twitter's shit set, Sean. And that's what we can get into in a bit. But it's, um, I, I get a random woman with a dog. On a boat, <laughs> <laughs> like legit. If you search, if you do twitter.com forward slash um, Plan B, it's a, it's a, it's a bird, or a, dude, I don't know, a dog and a yacht. That's it. Oh my god, one hundred trillion USD. Ah, uh. I'm blocked. Wouldn't surprise me. I, I found Plan T. I don't know. He's obviously not there then. I don't know. Whatever. He's went private, it looks like. Seems like everyone's gone private, but we'll get on to that. What's next on our topic? Um... Right. Up next is... Yeah, we're just going to go through, because everyone's been speaking about Canto the past two weeks or so, but I um, just want to fill people in. I don't know if you, have you, have you got any? Have you bridged over? Have you tried it? Right. So no. it's, there's nothing much to it. Um, basically, Canto.io slash bridge or Canto.io and then find the uh, bridging function. Uh, once you connect your wallet, you're going to be prompted to access the Canto. Um, network and it'll just plug in all the correct RPCs and chain ID and things like that. Really, really simple. And then uh, you can bridge that way. Um, I didn't do that myself um, because Synapse have just um, implemented a bridge, so you can just send USDC over. It will um, mint you one Canto on the end as well if you do do that. So by the time you get there, you've got some gas. The confirmations from Ethereum to can or take about 10 minutes <laughs> um but once you're over there that the network's pretty good actually um that being said apart from using slingshot to actually buy the bloody thing it's there's nothing else like literally nothing else there but um there is a project which 
one of our good friends is running at the minute. So uh, kind of long necks at NFTs. And what's interesting about this is someone posted the other day, if you've never seen a low cap network have its own NFT season and understand what that happens to the demand of the actual gas token, then it kind of happened with, there was a few other factors, obviously, but I can vaguely, well, not vaguely, I can definitely remember around the time of DGen Ape Academy on Solana, that kind of opened the door to like mass usage on Solana. And you, that's at, at the time where Solana just went fucking nuts. Um, but I can't imagine this is probably 10 times smaller than what Solana was at the time. So <clears throat> it's interesting to try. It's interesting to see. Um, a bit wary of some of the people who were talking about it, to be honest. Kind of serial serial dumpers <laughs> so um but it's one of those things where it's there's that many people talking about it that naturally it's just going to progress into different circles and the more the price goes up the more people cope and the more people form in my opinion um as i said i'd like to see a little bit more being built over there i know there's like a G- gmx fork popping up soon um not that that's very useful or anything but uh I don't know. Just keep an eye on it. It's been kind of performed pretty well. I think it's like 10x from the bottom. I know that I know Grey Matter from from the Canto Long Nicks. He's actually really cool. Uh, one of the co-founders and creators of the Canto Long Nicks, and they've been around for ages. I mean, they've cre- they created those Long Nicks ages ago. They've been around. Uh, quite a lot of the tapioca dar guys have them. I know that Matt's one of the founders from Canto Long Necks, and I think he's also involved with tapioca. So, yeah, they they good crew. Hey, I mean, I'm I'm actually quite I'm I'm quite pissed off with myself for not actually getting a long neck ages ago. But just been so busy, to be honest. It hasn't been because I didn't want to. It's just been just been too busy to get there. Yeah, six hundred percent, six x, nice. Not bad. Not bad. And there's there's some decent liquidity in there as well, like 27.9 million. I can't really work out the block explorer is complete dog shit. It's like the harmony one. Um so I can't really work there's... out what the actual market cap is. I wonder if it's on Coin Gecko actually. So how much are these like Canto Long Necks going for then? Two and a half grand, something like that. They're actually hey. quite pricey. Yeah, dude. That's what I saw one sell for the other day. I mean, I don't know if that's the average price. Speaking out of turn here, but I what's saw the, one um, go for two and a half. What's the um like Canto open sea? Is there an open sea? Is there a Canto? God, speak English, boy. Is there like an NFT marketplace? I think it's just directly through the site, and there might be a marketplace there. It is. Um, it is it's there's, there's that. When I say there's nothing over there, there is like literally nothing over there. I did look at their governance forums, and there was some hackathons that happened a little while back. So. Um, I can't for the life of me remember what that GMX fork. If you type in GMX fork Canto in Twitter, you're probably going to find what its, its name is. Not that uh, I don't know. You know, people want a place to trade, but I don't think there's any real kind of assets over there to actually trade at the minute. So mm. that'll be interesting. Um, so kind of like Aptos, right? Aptos has got nothing there either, but we know what's happening with Aptos. Yeah. Do we want to touch on? What the fuck's going on with Twitter at the minute? Well, I think the context of what's going on on Twitter is that everyone's gone private. Apparently, engagement's higher if you go private. Um, I mean, I had the engagement of ridiculousness. I'm not private at the moment, but maybe I should have gone private and maybe I would have hit, hit 5 million views on that <laughs> post. I don't know. It's, no, it's all very if you confusing. Go private, right, if you go private, people can't like retweet nothing. Yeah, I don't know. I have no I think idea what's people going just, on. People smelling their own farts, that's what it is. No one gives a shit if you go private. <laughs> no, I'm I'm in your greens. People are like go, going private at sixty nine four twenty. Brilliant. No one cares. So the algo has definitely changed. We've we've obviously determined through a number of really reliable sources that have run experiments that the alg- the Twitter algo has changed and it's changed around do not share outside links. I think, Grant, you've spent quite a lot of time exploring that um, in light of the fact that, you know, we, we we record here. We obviously post on 
on Twitter. We obviously would like people to come to YouTube and watch our videos, but that doesn't seem to to favor the algo. Secondly, there's, you know, if you ask particular questions in Twitter, the algo obviously reacts in a more favorable way and it kind of like spreads it out further. We've, we've seen that, you know, so if you ask someone the dumbest question, apparently really short, it works really well. So, you know, what did you have for that. breakfast? Yeah, it works better. So that's what I've managed to kind of establish out of this process. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I think it's like for, for we're, we're trying to grow a content platform. Um, it's not so it's not so much an issue now because the new site's been built. But when the new site's out there and it's so fully functional, and we've got like a huge audience on Twitter. It's it's just a bit fucking annoying. Um, Paid for Twitter Blue, changed my name because I had I was behind on messages. Change that back, lose all the functionality as soon as you change your name. It's like the search function just doesn't work. <laughs> just doesn't work at all. Um, if I try and search for you guys on a regular basis, it just shows me like loads of random people. Um, I know they're probably still just hammering away, getting it all right and things like that. But it just in that in this interim period, it just feels like it's a bit shit. <laughs> Something, something that I've noticed uh, is that, and it's very concerning, and I don't know if this is part of the whole Twitter algo, but trending for you right now is is dollar jizz. This is concerning. This is very okay. concerning, Grant. Is there something going on that we should know about? So we've got jizz, pea yeah. fertility, jizz, <laughs> and then AWAX and chain. I think the Twitter algo is definitely broken. <laughs> What did it have yesterday? It had yesterday. Number one was cocaine, and then the second one was arbitrary. (laughs) (laughs) Something's definitely going on with the Twitter algo. (laughs) Oh my god! (laughs) Oh god! I know. And the Bank of England. The Bank of England. What's going on here, dude? Are you working for the feds, maybe? Is that what's going on may, here? May, maybe. <laughs> Fe, fed confirmed. I'm coming fed for confirmed. you. Wow. Uh, but yeah, it has changed. Um, you know, they want additional content to be published through the app, which makes a lot of sense. They don't want external links, which is a bit fucking stupid, if you ask me. Um if they opened up the platform to allow us to post these full videos, we'd obviously do that. Um, but for now, it's, you know, we just have to bide our time with it, I think. Um, it's quite annoying when you spend, like, a week or even longer drafting up articles and try and publish them to the community and things like that. And it's it's definitely not getting as much reach as three months ago or whatever. And now, like, everyone, you know everyone's back now, like, a little bit anyway. A lot more people yeah. are back. Um, so there's something up try and figure it out it doesn't matter we'll still plug away anyway but um next in the running order so lyra's finally deployed arbitrum i think this is good you called it nice to see yeah nice nice to see uh, options particularly in options amm over there so basically the way that they're going to use and integrate with uh gmx is um, the current issue with on-chain options and an option AMM is one liquidity. So you can go over there. I think on Optimism they were using SUSD, so the synthetic stable coin. Uh, you deposit that in, you're effectively on the MM, taking the opposite side of everyone's uh, calls or puts or options contracts. The issue is when liquidity is low, um, someone who comes in and buys like a shitload of calls or a shitload of puts just skews the vol- volatility surface and it just makes the next person coming in just completely not want to purchase like additional uh, options. So they need to increase the depth of liquidity and they understand that. Um, I think these getting over to Arbitrum and integrating with GMX is a good call. Um, if you are deposited in the AMM, what's, what's really interesting why they're using GMX is if the call to put ratio is slightly skewed either way, so if it's slightly long or slightly short, then it will take some of the liquidity from the AMM and then leverage to kind of counter that risk. So if the pool, if the AMM on Lyra is net long, then 
instead of kind of um, allowing everyone who's deposited as an LP to be taking the other side of that risk, the actual liquidity underlying the people who went into Lyra will be effectively as close to delta neutral as possible because they'll short it or long it um, according to the, the call to put ratio effectively. So really interesting. They were doing that in synthetics on optimism. I still think they're doing that, but um, nice to see because they have flew under the radar for a while, but um, I think these have got the makings of a really, really good product. They just seem to be innovating. I met them, met them on a few calls a couple of times, met them in Singapore, just great guys. Um, so really happy to think. A lot, of, a, lot of a lot of deployment on Orb at the moment. It's like there's a lot uh, of projects well, moving out. It's just gonna be it's just gonna be the mains there. Um it's just it's just where you should be deploying. I think you get mm. that you get that Ethereum buy in, you get a great you get great infrastructure, you get cheap um, quick transactions. The team that facilitate you onboarding and core marketing and partnerships, fantastic, best best in the space, I think. Um, so this is another one that's launching. Try and dial the. I think you can go on now. So what they've done is is quite interesting. So um, if you've got a DGen score above a certain level, you can participate in the early sale. Or if you've got, uh, or if you're part of the ape dow you can participate and there's a few other kind of layers but it doesn't open to the public till tomorrow i believe so the we will have a podcast with them next week i believe but um if you like what treasure and magic have done and you've completely missed that ship um this might be one to keep an eye on for the next 12 months. Um, so, yeah, go and check it out. See if you can get access if you've been a complete degenerate over the past two years and your DGEN scores high. But if not, it opens up to the public um, tomorrow, I think. So if you listen to this now, it'll probably be in around 12, 16, 18 hours time. So that'll be interesting. Um, I've got, um, I got, well, got one question. Um, yep. Why do you think options, like on-chain options, hasn't really taken off yet? liquidity and then that's There's, it the, so you to be able to to be able to match the prices on the market leader which is Deribit, you need like a, an extortion amount of liquidity on chain so um dopex are trying it with their options vaults lyra i think is the more scalable model with the amm but you need that depth of liquidity to actually be able to make it competitive. Um, it's just, just the same as a having a DEX effectively. If you can get a better price at scale on Binance, um, think about the early days of Uniswap, where it might have only had a couple hundred million dollars of liquidity. It's like people are naturally going to do that. There's obviously some people that are going to do it all on chain because they might not have action, <clears throat> access to it or just like prefer it. But until the depth of liquidity is kind of caught up to the demand and usage then it doesn't really make for a great trading experience particularly at size um and also there's a lot of people that just don't just don't get it like they just don't understand it whatsoever so um Interesting. we've tried think, many um... times there was like there's like seven thousand people that read our degenerate guide to options which is on the website if anyone wants to read it do you think do you think that polygon might just like come out of nowhere um, when it comes to options trading, because they've got the partnership with Robin Hood, and Robin Hood was obviously famous during the bull run for like DJs, just like oh, oh, calls, puts, puts, calls. Do you think like out of nowhere somebody could launch an options platform on Polygon? Like, but this is you mean going completely off topic. Like, launch on there and then have some form of integration straight away with Robin Hood to allow like three bajillion DJs just to come straight on. You're gonna need that liquidity regardless, though. If people are buying it, like through, through, like if people are buying it through Robin Hood, there needs to be someone who's selling the option or writing the contract on the other end. And if there's like huge demand because it's such a simple UI UX, you're gonna need that depth of liquidity to write it. But if if there was like huge demand on the buying and selling of 
the options side, then there'd be a real demand for um, effectively market makers or options writers to then deploy liquidity because they know they'd be in retail's fucking lunch effectively. So it's kind of a chicken and egg situation. But if Robin had said they're gonna to, gonna integrate with Polygon, then yeah. But I think it feels like Polygon and Robinhood are just like at that stage now where they're just both marketing companies. Um, okay. And I know like the whole ZK things come in, but they were also the Ethereum scaling solution when rollups and side chains were coming. And I don't know they're supposed to be like the Swiss Army knife for Ethereum scaling and stuff like that. But I don't know. I don't. I don't necessarily buy it. All to be honest. Oh, interesting. But you've got Say, just just in terms Say of that, the... Matt, it's my biggest bag at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's obviously not financial advice. That is just like, yeah. What did he say his biggest <laughs> bag was? Matic. What? Matic. That, that is a very interesting topic of discussion because you're not the first one to have thrown Matic into the mix. And it seems like there's some really interesting things happening with Matic. I mean, it seems like... It seems like it's a really good bet right now. Not financial advice. But <laughs> I don't have a Matic bag, by the way. I, I don't have a Matic bag, but I've heard from some really reliable sources that there's some interesting stuff happening with Matic. Would you like to share with us what your thesis is around Matic at the moment? Not yet, no. I have bids in. <laughs> My opinion is not going to shake uh, billions of dollars of market cap. So, but I'm um, I will get onto it when we get to the charts bit because again, yeah, so like, my boring, like my like my boring like my boring uh, indicator, it's something as sophisticated as that. So that's a sophisticated <laughs> indicator. Do not fade. The I ain't faded that, bro. I ain't, like, like, last time, last time we faded that, like Shalana did, like a like a bajillion X. But did a two X, <laughs> two and a half X. Boom. Okay, what do you, what do you what are you bored on? Okay, let let ignore the governance, you know, boring stuff. Like, what, <laughs> what are you bored on right now? Um, I, no, I'll get into it. I'll get into it at the charts. There are a few things I'm really bored on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're gonna try and find a way for us to bring you more information about these governance proposals. I can't go into it a little bit too much here, but um, you've got to think. If these proposals go live and you can see them in the first couple of hours, usually that's a manual process, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. But um, if you can have tabs open that you can just flick through, you can get very, very early kind of front running alpha from these kind of things. This one isn't so much. Um, but again, if there's a big proposal that's going to generate uh, a big catalyst in the space, or for the specific project, then you can kind of act on that. And you can see the go the, the votes as they as they come through as well. So um, it's all very transparent. So I'm big on governance proposals and kind of scouring through them at the minute. So um, GMX and Gamma Swap collaboration. It's gonna be a huge crossover here. Uh, proposal OTC treasury swap between GMX and Gamma Swap. Treasury is a hundred thousand dollars worth of ES GMX and Gamma Swap tokens. Um, yeah, so effectively, this is going to be in return for Gamma Swap. We're going to take GMX ETH and then effectively make it delta neutral. So people who are providing liquidity on Gamma Swap with GMX ETH, um, they're going to be not delta neutral. They're going to be um, removing any additional risk of impermanent loss. So encourages that liquidity, makes JMX token a little bit more stable over time and everyone's happy. And this will not be the first collaboration between these two um, because if you go and listen to the interview I did with Devin on the channel uh, from Gamma, Gamma Swap, there's a couple of hints and a little bit little drop, droplets of alpha all over that one. Um, Self-limiting pool from Rocket Pool is a really interesting one. Um, Again, Monday, we've got an interview with Darren from Rocket Pool coming out. But he, because Rocket Pool is the most decentralized um, staking service, I suppose, on, on the market. Um, and they're really leaning heavily into this decentralization aspect of it. So, this self limiting Rocket Pool RPIP 17 is all about 
if Rockapool scales its validators to a specific point where it takes up um, like a large portion of the validator set, they will actually self-limit how many people can actually join at that point. And you might think, well, that's capping your capping your growth. But if Ethereum continues to grow, grow it doesn't necessarily cap it. And also, um, they want to really make sure and be really kind of understanding that when things grow too big, we've seen it a little bit with Lido, um, they can be a fo- centralizing force on the Ethereum network. So um, really interesting one, kind of like reverse PSYOPs. Love it. Uh, but I think it's like really, really net positive long term for that. So, Grant, what you're saying is that government governance proposals are just another form of of alpha seeking, and it's something that we want to essentially focus on more and bring in bite sized chunks to our community in the future. Is that kind of on the agenda here? Here we Double go. Double thumbs up. So, just so that everyone Double. knows, just so that everyone knows. We are the first ones that are probably going to land up doing this in the context that we will, and the rest will land up following. But by then, we will have we will be doing something better and faster and harder <laughs> than the rest. Um, Dan, what was the other two that were in the newsletter that you brought up? Uh, we gave a reminder of Floki. So, Floki, as of today, February third, they'll be reducing their buy and sell tax. And then on February 9th, they're going to be um, burning, I think it was like uh, $55 million worth worth of tokens. So something like that is, it could be one of those buy the rumor, sell, sell the news plays. Because if you look at the Floki chart, Floki's obviously pumped from it um, on a pullback now on the four hour. But it's something to, to keep consideration. Also got uh, optimism as well. So optimism will be... Just get it up. Uh, I'll read it here. So they've just put their governance proposal in. So the Optimism Foundation has proposed the first protocol upgrade to the Optimism Collective Bedrock, which essentially will go live on March fifteenth. So yeah, just keep it. Keep an eye on, on Optimism. There's a lot going on there. Yep. Awesome. Right. Um, yeah, I think we've covered everything so we can get in some charts. Any requests? Should we do the big dogs first? Yeah, let's yeah, do let's the big do dogs. Let's do Matic. Are we going on straight? No, let's do BDC first and we'll get to Matic. I'm curious to see what the sentiment is with you guys around BTC. A couple of guys were saying that maybe it's a little bit toppy here. Um, I don't have an opinion. I'm just curious to hear what you guys think. It's NFT NFT season. Mm. Get all this shit out the way. Um, yeah, it's just at the range high, isn't it? So yeah, it is, and this it seems to be quite a quite a significant point of resistance. I mean, it went it almost it hit twenty four thousand last night, and then it hit that resistance point, and it's it it pulled back really sharply sharp on Apple's results. I mean, who would have thought that? Apple will have an effect on Bitcoin, though. The fucking irony of that. Mate, we got rugged by an Apple yesterday. What we got rugged hell? by an Apple. Yeah. The Apple fell off the tree and it hit Bitcoin on the head. Yeah. Stupid, That's... man. Yeah, it does look a bit top-heavy at the minute, but um, particularly over weekend, low... <sighs> low-volume weekends, mark up... If, like, particularly market makers, if they wind down and things like that, and on-chain activity increases, never know. Weekends have, been pretty, weekends have been pretty good recently. Weekends have been good from a shitcoin perspective. Like, the shitcoins have been flying, like, big time. I mean, people are, discords are alive at the moment. I mean, I'm in, I'm in at least a dozen, but uh, a dozen discords that I follow quite closely. And the apes are aping and making money. It's great to see. Um, so weekends are great for that at the moment. Hopefully we'll have another one. I have some bets out. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's it's been really strong. Definitely outperforming ETH as well. So interesting to see. Um, Ansem uh, put out a post the other day and they asked how many how many people are how much Bitcoin are, is making up people's portfolios, and there was like sixty percent of people who had zero. Um, 
And you know why he does that. Again, if you watch the interview we did with him, it's so he can see where the money will flow next um, and see if he can get, get an edge on it and just crowdsources that information. So, um, yeah, if been, it's been decent from the bottom, but it's been pretty poor in relative strength, I think, to, to Bitcoin. And, um, yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it. Can't do anything about it at the minute. Can we do Phantom first? Yes. Woo! I've been seeing... I've been seeing quite a lot of activity uh, within the Phantom ecosystem. Uh, it's definitely picked up Andre Cronier's presence and his insistence on, you know, kind of like making those strategic posts. Oh, look at look at Beethoven's, I think it was Beethoven. Look at Beethoven's reporting. It's impressive, isn't it? This is what we're going to do. We're now a corporate entity as well. We're going to be responsible. We're going to be accountable. We're going to show you exactly what it is that we're going to do and by the way, we have 30 years of runway left in our treasury. We mean business. And it seems to have rubbed <laughs> off. That's what he's doing, right? I mean, and it seems to have rubbed off. I mean, a uh, very good friend, Nick from Ravello, is very bullish on FTM. And I can see why. It's like there's real, there's real deliberation around delivery responsibility and it's kind of like he's packaging this whole thing and he's telling the story and it's it's so cool to see it's like this this real life theater of business and crypto and degeneracy all rolled into one it's wonderful he's also going to be at eve dubai as well old andre he's going to be speaking there so could that be a good catalyst for phantom maybe yeah, Phantom. I've always enjoyed Phantom. I've always enjoyed the ecosystem. I've enjoyed the projects. I mean, we've we've we're going to be interviewing one of the the projects that are on there. Um, I think the token is Oath. Um, bite Masons. And I think this. Pardon, Grant. The bite bite Masons and Be Bebus, Bebus, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, Bebus. I mean, that, they, those guys are proper DeFi, you know, big brains and and. You know, they've been on F FTM the whole time and there's, there's some really cool projects there. You know, we've kind of like forgotten about them. But I agree. I think FTM is is relevant and I think we're going to see some cool things, you know, now that this market's picked up again. Yep. So, should we do Mike then? This I, agree is... with, I agree with her about... Um gas monetization though i think that's a it's a very clever clever idea yeah i agree yeah that's i suppose that's the one thing because Can canto had the um effectively their governance proposal put forward and their upgrade which effectively the way that they'll do it is um if you build an app on that chain um the gas that goes through the application will get some kind of rebate or pay from um each kind of transaction. So mm -hmm. um, it's like chains <clears throat> incentivizing in that way. And what's really interesting is we should probably keep probably keep tabs on this as much as I, I don't necessarily like JMX Fox. Oh, that's gonna be a two sided statement. But if if that if that particular protocol gets a shitload of fees rebated back to it from uh, because it, whatever address deploys the smart contract gets gets the rebate effectively. So it's a really interesting way to incentivize developer activity. Because if you do really well with it, you have a specific contract that does extremely well, you're going to get paid really, really well as well. So that's interesting. Um, Matic yeah. Thesis. Uh, the most normy way for people to gain exposure to ZK narrative. That's about it. And you know so what? I, You're right. That is a really boring explanation, but that is probably like the right explanation to have. Now, you don't obviously talk about like how there's a lot of like on chain activity on it. You know, when you look <coughs> in these like you, um, whale telegrams, you, you see there, you see a lot of whales, you know, purchasing it. Um, yeah. What's your boring thesis then? Or is it just a ZKM play? I think the business development and marketing team. Apart from, well, the business development team is probably the best in the industry. The marketing team is probably only second to Arbitrum. Um, and if they have a narrative that they can latch on to, that's the size of the whole ZK narrative. 
then they're going to throw the kitchen sink at it effectively. And um, it's a very retail driven token as well. It gets Ethereum community buy-in. I don't know how, but it's it's managed to do that. <laughs> um, they've played that like masterfully, effectively, where other other chains couldn't. Um, and they've got a ridiculously large community. Um, I don't think the network works. <laughs> I don't think the product works personally, but um, it's been a long time since I've tried it out. But uh, Sometimes you don't even need a product to work and as long as you've got a strong narrative and a strong community and a very strong retail attention, um, you just want those people coming in and smashing market buy on Binance and things like that, don't you? So we'll see. It could be wrong. Um, I don't know. Charlie, yeah. sorry. Well. Obviously, obviously uh, uh, NFA, DYR and all that kind of jazz. Yeah, it's honestly me. I'm a complete fucking idiot. So if you listen to me and put money on stuff, you you should deserve to lose money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Any of the any of the big? I think um, Avalanche looks pretty good. Kind of flying under the radar a little bit. Now is that just because of the narrative of uh, Amazon NFTs? Potentially. Hmm. Did that get confirmed though? Like. Um, I'm not sure to be fair, but it's pumping the bag. Yeah, Solana's ch- just chilling out, blowing 24, 25. Um, is there any of these large ones that'll be on Trade and View that you want to see, or should we have a look at some shit coins? Uh, I'm gonna say Ave. Ave's done a couple of like interesting moves recently, and I think a lot of it's to do with its governance because it's just launched uh, V3 on Ethereum, Polygon, and uh, Avalanche. Nice. So, it's it's looking to be fair. Like, is that on the weekly? I can't see. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want? Which I mean, that, that's that, that's looking strong. Is that a 50 or a 200 email you got there? 200. 200 yeah. the pink. Uh, okay. 50. And if you get that cross, <clears throat> if you get that 50, like on the daily, if you get that uh, 50 pork in its head above the 200. Um, there's a lot of algorithms and a lot of people who trade on that kind of golden cross scenario. So um, that's a good if you looking go, chart. If you, go, if you go and backtest some of the data on that, you'll just see things completely rip following like a 50, 200 DMA cross. So um, it'll probably just get converge, 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 and then like fucking, I don't know. Satoshi will move his, move his coins finally. <laughs> <Just think. laughs> um, yeah, there's some. Um, right, this is the this is the part of the episode where we shell our bags. <laughs> um, this thing's been going nuts. So this Whoa. is a GMX. This is a GMX fork on Phantom, and effectively, it's just acting acting like uh, you know, like the bull and bear tokens that you get in an exchange. So it's like a, it's like the, the child of a Phantom GMX bull and bear token. So it's a really high bit to play on that, but uh, yeah, it's it's been going quite strong recently. Um, it's got quite a big market cap, doesn't it? A, it seems a bit high to get involved at this point. What, but 9 unless, million? Yeah, or do you think it's still got more to go? Doesn't matter. Let's revisit. I don't think it does. <laughs> Let's see. I'm not optimistic that it will maintain. I think... I'm scared, I'm scared of that chart. I think we had... This chart looks like the beginning of what Liquid Driver looked like. Liquid Driver was one of my best trades last year. Why did you even... You knew that. That's why you said that. You're <laughs> so dodgy, bro. I'm going to watch your wallet and we're just going to dump it all on your head. <laughs> <laughs> so rude. Eh? <laughs> Guys, if you thought it was not PvP season, you are hugely mistaken. <laughs> friends dump on friends. Friends are ex yeah. for each other. Um, so something that's a little bit further afield, but it's been doing really, really well, 
um, it's like pull back now, but if degenerates love to gamble <laughs> and this roll roll bit or whatever it's called on on uh, Solana has been doing incredibly well. But um, I think I think a lot of Arbitrum micro caps have been having their day if they have some kind of gambling or casino kind of narrative as well. What's interesting is if you like GMX and you like options and if you like gambling, well, guess who's going to have them all? <laughs> Hero is going to have all the infrastructure and all revenue shares are going to be going back to staked Hero. Um, I checked my stake the other day actually, and because of the airdrops that are ongoing now, it's it's fat. It's getting fatter by the week. <laughs> so, um, really interesting one to keep an eye on. I really like the idea of on chain sports book or on chain gambling. I think I just think it's particularly as as you say a very PvP market. If you want to go to the casino or sports betting you know, or things like that, I think it just makes it obvious sense. Um, but yeah, that's been performing pretty well. And I don't know if I have another one. I mean, the Canto one's pretty good to look at. Oh, right. So this is a re this is a big issue. So what I've just done is typed in Canto into Deck Screener, and you get a million and one fake Canto honeypots. Um, with 11, that can't be right. 112 I think million, what we might, that can't be right. I think what we, might, what we might need to do soon is do like a little video mm -hmm. on a mixture of like wallet tracking, honey pots, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, because 100%. retail are coming. I can smell them. <laughs> they stick. But yeah, Canto's done well. Um, Aura has been flying. I think I mentioned this on the last last time we were on. Um, I think people looks like it's just going to push higher again. Any any project or anyone who wants to gain this liquid staking yield following Shanghai, they're going to need some aura, or they're going to need some convex, or they're going to need some bouncer, or they're going to need some curve. It's um, it's just kind of natural. I don't know how long this can be sustained for, but we've only had like three three days of decent size volume candles as well. Um, we've got an article that's coming out on liquid on, on LSDs, uh, something that we've worked on. Should be coming out in the next week or so. So kind of like a deep dive into what it's all about, make sense of it. So keep an eye out for that, guys. Yeah, so really low one, so just be careful, but great product. Uh Y2K, so they're going to have um, liquid staking DPEG insurance vaults. So you can effectively take stake D from Lido, put it in one of their vaults. Um, and if it, you can effectively do two thing, one of two things. You can underwrite the risk of it DPEGing, or you can bet on it staying at PEG. Um, and depending on it's effectively like a paramutual, so depending on how much people are on either side of that bet, you will be paid out accordingly. So um the first e the first epoch on Y2K, Mim did DPEG and the people who were hedged got paid substantially. So um I think it's a great product, two point six million. I think it's I think it's a little brain to be honest. I haven't got I haven't got any yet, so by the time you see this video, I might have bought some. <laughs> so kinda of like everyone else front room my own positions, but uh those are the only ones I've really got my eyes on, I think. I mean, the, the AI narrative's been completely kicking off a storm. I mean, so many shit coins coming out of that. It's actually been quite funny to see. Like I said, it's just like everything's cooking at the moment. Um, yeah. I, I guarantee none of them make <laughs> an AI product. Oh, Obviously not. Even the di even the di even the Dino AI coins like Fat and Ocean were pumping, but <laughs> and they've been developing for years. Yeah, they have. I mean, the whole AI narrative is it's huge. I mean, it's there's so much there. Developers are using it. Everyone's using it. I mean, I've got got one of our community members who does marketing full time, um, like for for corporate, and he uses you know, AI to actually communicate 
on a marketing level with people and um and i and i and i suspect it's kind of like just keep the iq at like 65 and you'll be successful with the kind of output that you get coming back to the twitter algorithm maybe there's a connection maybe twitter's tw twitter's algorithm is running on an ai and the ai has been well, set for 65 iq maybe that's what it is well, yeah. Elon I mean, was... just look at Grant, look at Grant's feet. Uh, P fertility, and then like a bag of jizz. <laughs> I mean, Elon was a early investor in OpenAI as well, the ChatGPT. Um, but he so he he, um, he exited, didn't he? From right and saying. Oh, did he exit? I'm not entirely sure. Um, but Tesla's got a lot of AI and shit like that in it as well. Um, yeah, my, one of my friends works for a. I suppose it is AI, I suppose it's data. Um, but they effectively have a like a sales product. So say you like in commercial sales or financial sales or whatever, if you're having a call with someone, um, it transcribes the call while you're speaking to them and it knows your product. So if someone asks you a question on the other end and uh, you need a prompt or whatever, it tells you like the perfect answer to reply to them. So it kind of increases conversion rates drastically. So you might be having conversations in sales calls in your professional life and the other person sat at the other end of the computer or the phone is getting prompted by AI to how to deliver the best answer based on what you're speaking to it like. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. Wow. No, it is nuts. Cool, guys. I think that's the top of the hour. Yeah. been nice to do a more kind of structured... Um, format uh, i think we've got quite a lot covered uh don't forget to like and subscribe uh what's something happening with the newsletter dan uh yeah we just got we're going to be launching our referral scheme next week and there's going to be some alpha alpha it's going to be a very busy weekend for me because i'm going to be looking <laughs> at um putting together various different wallet tracking areas and i say no more yeah, we had some yeah, nice you'll wanna, meetings around that. Yeah. You'll want to go and subscribe to it because we're going to be giving away a lot of free shit that you people in scam discords try and make you pay for. So all we ask for in response is you just subscribe to the YouTube. It takes two seconds. Subscribe to the newsletter. It's not hard. Read the newsletter and you'll get access to all this information, all this free shit that everyone else is charging you for. Um, so that's all we ask. Uh, we takes a lot of time for us to do this kind of thing. Takes a lot, Dan's going to be working all weekend and lucky I'm not. Um, but yeah. So if that's it, we'll be having a lot of interviews come out over the weekend, over the next week. Rockapool and Eigen there. That did, that's two of my favorite ones from last we've week. Got Dar, we've got Defector Dar guys coming in. We've got Divas and the Oath guys coming in. Uh, there's a ton of really cool stuff happening at the moment. A little bit of green on the charts and people are coming out the woodwork. A lot of money being raised for projects that are looking to pretty much change the space in so many ways. It's been a really busy two weeks meeting with projects and can you write about us? Cool, what are you doing? And then they tell you what they're doing and your brain melts and it's kind of like, oh shit, we're going to have to research this thing into the early hours of the morning. So there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. Uh, keep keep in tune with what we're doing, guys. Follow us on the socials. Please like and subscribe. It makes a big difference so we can do this. All right. Have a good weekend and see you next time.